Welcome to Creative Tien. In the last video, we start the cardigan knitting on an LK150 knitting machine. We have three rectangle pieces, two smaller one for the front and one big one for the back. And we made a pattern from tracing an old sweater that fits us. And we also saw the lines. If you look closely, you can see we saw the line with the regular sewing machine. I saw it twice, so it's more secure. And today we are going to cut. I'm just going to leave some seam allowance, maybe half inch or a little bit less. And in some areas, like the sides, I don't have extra fabric, so I will just leave it. And from the cut line here, or the sewing line, I'm going to leave a little bit seam allowance. And I'm just going to cut with a regular scissor. Now we cut the three pieces. It looks more like a cardigan now. And I will just put the right side facing each other. And you can decide which side is the right side. For me, the knee side is the right side and the pearl side is the wrong side. And I will sew up the shoulder line and the side for the body part. So they will be here, here, and the shoulder on the top. And you can use a regular sewing machine, but if you have an overlocker or a serger, it will be much easier because you will trim the extra fabric and finish at the same time. So I'm going to use the serger for those few lines. So I add my pins and now I'm ready to sew. I'm using my brother 1034D overlocker. It's a very popular serger. The price is not too bad for this machine. You can find it online easily. And I'm starting from one end of the shoulder, go all the way to the other end, and including the back of the neck area. Now this is the back side after sewing the lines on the sides and the shoulder line. You are going to see some waving lines. That's normal because of the serger. We can steam or block it later so the stitch will even out more. Now this is the front side. After I give it a steam, you can see the shoulder line is not that wavy anymore. It's still not perfectly straight, but it's okay to me. So the next thing, we just need to add more trims. And the easiest way is to knead a long piece of trim and sew it down. And here is what I did. It's just a plain stitch with one stitch out of work in the center. So I have five knit stitch, one out of work, and five knit stitch. And for the sleeves, I have six stitches on each side and one stitch in the center. I just want to make it a bit longer to cover up all the raw edges. And the reason for one empty stitch in the middle is so you can fold it in half easily, either with the wrong side facing out or with the neat side facing out so we can enclose the raw edges. And for the lens, you just have to use a measuring tape. So I just use a piece of tape and measure how long I need the trim to be, because for me, the front part and the neck and the bottom one is one continuous trim. So I have a very long, it's almost like 88 inches. For the sleeves, I have around 14 inches and I want it to be a little bit wider. So I have six stitches on each side and one stitch in the center that's out of work. And you can decide which one you want the trim to be the front. I think I will go with the wrong side, the reverse stockinette stitch. 
as the front side because that's a nice contrast compared to the regular stockiness stitch I have here. Now I start with the sleeve trim and I start with the armpit side, the lower part, so you don't see the seam that much. And I want the right side facing each other before I sew, so it will be the right side of the plain stockinette stitch and the reverse stockinette stitch because we want it to be the right side. And we can pin it first, and I will just sew a line close to the previous sewing line or maybe a little bit out so you don't see the previous line. So you'll be like here all the way first. It's easier to connect the trim for the sleeves first to make into a circle. So you just sew up the two ends together first and then sew the trim onto the sleeves. That's after sewing the sleeve, I'm going to fold it in halfway and then I will just hand sew it on the other side. Now I'm going to use the same technique for all of the trims. For the trim in the bottom, I will start with the corner here and go all the way to the top and back down to here and then connect the trim. And again, the right side facing the right side. So that will be this side and this side because I want this to be the right side. And just sew a line over the previous sewing line or a little bit lower so we can cover it and then enclose the raw edge by folding over and then hand sew it on the other side. Now here is the end. I have some extra yarns and I'm going to unravel some of it several rows until about the right length and then just sew it together with the yarn needle and the yarn tail here. So those two ends will connect. So now that's about right. I'm going to sew both sides together. After connecting the ends, I'm going to continue sewing to the end here. Now we sew on the trims. The only thing left is to turn it inward about halfway and then we can sew it from the back side so it has a nicer finish and hides all the raw edges. You can do it on the sewing machine too but it's harder to control exact location of the thread so you might see a little thread in the front. I use a big yarn needle and the sewing thread to sew the back side of the trim because it's much easier and you don't see the thread easily. So that's it for this project. Thank you for watching. I hope you like it. It's not the most professional way to knit a sweater, but it's a very quick way just cut and sew on a regular sewing machine or a combination with a serger. Thank you for watching today and see you next week.